When we talk about PR, when I talk about PR, we all want it to be the best. This expansive universe, remembering small details, throwbacks, characters, great stories. But I forget what it's like for someone new coming into the series. It's daunting as the show gets older. 26 years is a long time. How would you introduce this franchise? It's not straightforward. Every season has a different take, different characters, themes, technology, corny moments. Picking seasons that showcase the best moments, the fun moments, the action moments is complicated. It's limited beyond what I want to include. Seasons like In Space and RPM, I decided not to add because they deal with hard continuity and alternate dimensions. I don't want to confuse people, but I also want to showcase some problems that you deal with watching PR. I don't want to paint the franchise as this invincible thing either. Thank you, Bectic Studios, for the idea. If you have a suggestion or a topic, leave a comment below. I might pick it one day. Dino Charge. There's a few reasons why I wanted to start the list here. Dino Charge has a lot of the classical elements of PR. Comedy, dinosaur theme, relationships. The characters are different from each other. It uses additional rangers to a large degree. It also doesn't lock a person to only these colors are used on Power Rangers. There's more variety. I also picked it as a main example where a season can go wrong in its second half. If this is someone's first season, it gives them an open view whether they think it's a bad season overall or it's a good season with just a confusing ending. Ninja Storm. Ninja Storm made it because it showcases how the villain side can be comedic. Lothar is a divisive character. People love him, people hate him. Lothar also has a dark side. He crosses into both extremes. PR at its core is corny. You gotta showcase that. If you can enjoy it, you can push on with the series. It also introduces the three ranger starting colors. Bug rangers, characters that fail right at the start, a guinea pig mentor. We look at PR seeing a monster made from a pink purse that's all normal. For a newcomer, this is gonna be weird. Not everyone's gonna like the cheesy costumes. Ninja Storm goes all out in these areas. If you find season 11 fun, you're gonna like a good chunk of the universe. Lost Galaxy. This, of course, is a good starting off point. Lost Galaxy was the first time the series did a soft reboot, meaning the original five-year running story concluded. All new villains, heroes, anti-heroes began with this one. It's also a great showcase of the writers adapting a Sentai that's animal-based into a sci-fi show, that clashing of footage. You have to show people this is Japanese material repurposed into a completely different show. The Magna Defender story is a really great draw. Is he a good character? Is he a bad character? Deviata and the ending of the season will surprise people on how far Power Rangers can go into a somber direction. If you enjoy Lost Galaxy, some may be interested in how the Super Sentai played out. Everyone now has access to Giga Man. You can see how Japan runs these series, which could help you understand why Power Rangers works the way it works. You might appreciate both of them a little bit more. Dino Thunder. I know, why would you pick Dino Thunder when it has Tommy? It works great for starters with having Tommy. For older people, everyone will remember who Tommy is in a basic sense, from all the fans, the TV Guide articles, even some news reports complaining about PR in the beginning. Tommy is a name people know. When they see him, they'll get to see what he's all about in a older, more experienced mentor role. On the other side, for the kids, he introduces all the past seasons in his suits. Dino Thunder gives you a peek into PR's past without spoiling much. Kids will see the old stuff, they might get interested in the history. What did Tommy do in Zeo? Why is the Green Ranger so remembered? Stuff like that. Then you have Mezagog. Lethem gains a great actor under that makeup. The school setting came back, the show has four really great new rangers, the zany aesthetics of the Zords, Cassidy and Devin being a homage to Bulk and Skull, but still being their own characters. Some tough love with Trent and him turning evil. Rangers can be bad. That can be a shocker to new people. It's a good jump in point. SPD. SPD, I would say, is the boasting season. It has high production values. It's in a futuristic setting. The team is cops. Their mentor is a talking dog. The mechanic is a half-human cat. Describing SPD kind of makes the season sound insane. Then you have this magical kid, a talking bone guy. That's what makes PR PR. What you also need is the cast clicking together. I don't want people to take this the wrong way. There's a load of seasons that have great characters, but it's more rare to enjoy the entire ensemble. SPD is remembered for a lot of reasons, but mainly the cast. You can forgive most of the issues SPD had because of them. While I like the season, the second half started to copy the Sentai, the characters were resetting a lot, but Jack through Kruger, ignoring the ball of failures, pushes you through those tidal waves of annoyances. It's important to get the chemistry down. They took all the cool bits from Decker Ranger's characters, mishmashed them through our characters. Bridge is probably the best executed funny guy from 
odd ways to solve cases, to his obsession with buttered toast. Jack and Z, who were criminals, joined and led the team, helping out the others so they loosened up. Sky dealing with the loss of his father and his blind want to be the Red Ranger, learning lessons along the way. Sid, who became a better person, respecting people, and Rick the dog. I also can't forget the effort the production crew went through. Without them, the show wouldn't have had aliens, closure to Kruger's story, plus a US Megazord ending. This is how you work around a limited budget. Time Force. A lot. I mean, a lot of people will consider this the best season of Power Rangers. Why did this happen? Many things clicked together. The cast is one of those that worked together. The supporting cast, especially Wes's father, was a top-notch actor. Never phoned in his performance. He respected what the season set out to do. The villains were more than villains, but the themes Time Force dealt with went into areas where you can almost be on board with what Rancic, Frax, and Indira do. The story, while they fumbled with the whole time travel part of it, complemented the basic values of PR. We had a newbie Red Ranger, a pink ranger that lost her fiance, which caused her to nearly cross a line, but pulled out of all this becoming the best leader for the team. Things that PR rarely cover, a sixth ranger that wants power and to prove himself above everything, not just be altruistic. Revenge and murder plagued the enemy side, which led to their downfall. A twist ending that paid off all the characters, leaving redemption for few. It was so popular, a movie was considered. That's how successful the season was. Lightspeed Rescue. I believe Lightspeed Rescue is the best choice in showing someone new what Power Rangers is all about. It's a more grounded season. The powers were created by a military organization. The Rangers were highly skilled, but regular people. The dynamic the Rangers have with the city and themselves. They have no secret identity, so they work as public servants. It also has a US created Ranger that many people loved. The Sentai it was based on was all real-life departments. No need for excessive sci-fi elements. The villains feature many different sides. Monsters, magic, spacefaring aliens, astrological dependencies. I would also say the most balanced use of each ranger. Granted, Ryan vanishes for a good chunk, but his arc is memorable. Finally, a good blending of drama and comedic tones from Joel. Lightspeed, in my eyes, checks all the boxes of what Power Rangers is. I really wanted to pick a full list of 10 seasons, but I wanted to stick with the purpose of this video, to introduce people to the series. There are team-up specials through these seasons. You can easily skip these episodes if you don't want to be spoiled, but they do work good as a small taste of the previous year. I'm probably going to get some hate that I didn't include any of MMPR. It's the first series, it made Power Rangers, no denying that, but I'm looking at the storytelling. MMPR is simple. Later seasons are closer to what audiences expect. If you fall in love with these seasons, I highly suggest you start working your way through the series from the beginning. It will take time, but it will be a fun journey watching a TV series evolve through two and a half decades. For everyone else, what do you think of my choices? Are these seven seasons a good representation of Power Rangers? What other seasons would you put down? It's hard to pick these things. You want to impress but not scare away with all this information. New episodes every Monday. Next week, I'm gonna start talking about Nick and trying to fix the problems with Mystic Force. Sorry about not including stills in the video. Due to past fair use abuses from the various companies involved, I no longer feature them. Thank you for understanding. See you in the next video.